Here's my old bench here, just like a two by three. Worked okay on the smaller sets and small radios, but when you get a bigger chassis on there, it just wasn't enough room for the picture tube and test equipment, literature. Uh, started on this yesterday. I really, really needed something a lot larger than what I had. Don't have it set up yet. I'll hopefully, by the end of the video, you'll see the completed project. But this is 32 inches deep across here, and it's eight feet this way. So that should give me plenty of room to work on the larger sets. But I just made it out of two befores. You can see under there. I built the top framework and it just fastens to the legs. As you can see, the legs go underneath the edge of it. And I have a brace here at 32 inches running all the way across underneath the plywood. Here's the other one here, goes across. And then I just cut my sheet of plywood, got it screwed down. This is, this is smooth top plywood. In other words, it's got rough side, but it's got a smooth side too. So I'm gonna make a pretty good bench, I think. It'll get dinged up, and they all do, but it should last me a good while before I have to do anything else to it. My plan is to build a, you can see some of my test equipment here, but my plan is to build a, a shelf here over and back down. My service literature, here's some of it here. I'll mount, put it on top of the shelf where it's easy to get to. So I'll be doing some more work on it and I'll show you the progress and by the end of the video you'll see my new workbench. Here's a shelf I built to put the service literature on. The Beatman's from 51 to 59. And then I have the Wallace schematics. 46, most of them are 47 to 53. The motor only is 46, but that'll cover most of the smaller sets. And this is my old NRI home study course from back in the 70s. I still have it after all of these years. And this is a really handy book here. It's a dictionary, radio, television, electronics dictionary. Anyway, that turned out pretty well. I angled the sides here. You can see to where I can put books up there and it'll help them stand up. And I didn't want to bring it up and then straight over it would have been just more in the way. So this kind of works and look, looks pretty good too. And then underneath I've got some of my test equipment just stowed under there for right now. So this morning what I'm doing, I took out my old bench and I'm going to move these two cabinets, the tall one and the shorter one with the drawers and put them right here at the end of the bench. So that's what I'm doing this morning. I'm going to have to unload the, the cabinets to move them. They're so heavy. But I'll get that done today, hopefully. Make a little more progress. I move my cabinets with the drawers and the two upright doors. Put them right here at the end of the bench. Resistors and caps in those cabinets. And at the end, I had room for a couple of spare new old stock picture tubes. Last thing I need to hook up is the Blonder Tongue Agile Modulator with a VCR. I transmit on channel 6 to check the tuners in the TVs. Check for a picture anyway. I've got an analyzer that will put a test pattern, but to check an actual picture, I use this for channel 6. I'm going to mount it. You can see the wires, the two wires hanging down there. I'll mount it back over there. Uh, either on top of the cabinet or 
maybe over in this corner somewhere. Whenever I move these cabinets, got everything, got everything organized, at least temporarily. We all know how that, how long that'll last. This is cleaning supplies, sandpaper, there's fuses, some more test equipment there in the bottom that I don't use. One of the last things I did was mount this drawer underneath the bench here. There's my tools, x light blades, tape, solder, alignment tools, and in the back some toothbrushes and paint brushes, things like that. Final thing I did was build this shelf above the bench here. And I just got all my test equipment on it. And also my AC outlets. Mounted them up there where I can get to them easy and they're out of the way rather than having them down on the bench. That's a current meter that I just have plugged in there when I finish a, finish a set. Then I can plug it in to see how much current it's drawing, see if it's normal. My sorting iron, I just mounted it down with a screw where it's stationary, the holder is. Still have plenty of storage over here. Parts. Again, there's the service literature and books that I have. Tube checker, I just left it over here. There's more room for it. And I can get to it where it's at or I can pull it out there and set it down on the bench if I have several tubes to check. And there's my parents' clock that they've had in their home since the, probably the 50s. And I got it mounted here to keep track of time. I don't want to don't want to run out of time when I'm working on something. <laughs> but anyway, I, that's that's a good memory there. That old clock I remember that when I was a kid when we were growing up. Still works good, good, and keeps good time. And there's the Tucker 48 poster. I left it up. Uh, wish I had one of those, don't we all? Got my stool there. And I got a chair over here. So I can work on either one, depending on what I'm working on. I'm going to call this, this video completed. Hope you've enjoyed watching me build my new workbench. And maybe got some ideas. I think it'll work for me. I've got a lot more room than I had before and and so far it's worked out well. Uh, this is a, in fact a, the good example here on the bench I have a it's a 21 inch traveler TV and as you can see I've got the tube mounted in it and there's still room to work. So that's kind of what I was going for to have plenty of room to, to work on a bigger set like this. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel. Thanks.